of stories about the two child uh, benefit cap. Now, I have to say, I don't think any of us are really surprised that the Labour MPs who were elected in Scotland in the recent general election have all, almost without exception, not backed scrapping the two child cap. Now, before we start getting confused about whether the cap is being changed, abolished, or, or simply done away with, or some other cap is being put in its place. Basically, all that's being talked about here is getting rid of the limit which is set on the amount of benefits a family can claim for the number of children they have. Now, in the old days, we used to have a thing called family allowance. And family allowance was paid to all families, regardless of size, and it was sufficient for even quite large families. In my case, when I was a child, there were four siblings. So that family allowance was a universal benefit, a universal credit, as we would now call it. Now, if a, a woman, let's say a single parent, has three children, she will only get the child benefit for two of them. And the third child gets absolutely nothing unless that woman can claim, and claim with proof, that that child was the result of a rape. Now, this is an obscenity that anybody should ever have to beg for benefits uh, and admit to being raped and that would be the reason why she had the third child. It's a piece of nonsense. Invented by the Tories is a punishment for the poor. It's not a benefit. It is a right. Anyone who exists in this uh, entire so-called United Kingdom is entitled to enough money to live on, at least to survive on. But typical of the British state, rather than giving people what they actually need to survive, they only give them a bit of it. In this case, two thirds of what a family with three children actually needs to support that, that third child, all of those children, in fact. Remember that the two existing children are going to have less spent on them in order to make up for the fact that the third child gets nothing. Now, as we know, the SNP had put in place an additional child payment which actually plugged this gap. And that payment had to come from the Scottish Block Grant, which, as we know, is 60% of the taxation which Scotland produces. The other 40% of our taxation is spent by the British government in other parts of the United Kingdom, principally, mainly in England, because it has the lion's share of the population, which has always left the Scottish government uh, in a pickle, because in a situation like this, um, opposition parties are claiming that the SNP should do something to mitigate this disaster, a disaster which they created themselves and which they now expect the SNP to spend money on, which they don't have because the Parliament in London has taken away 40% of it, so they can't afford to pay it. To me, the entire situation at the moment is like taking a gigantic leap back to the 1970s when uh, there were no SNP MPs, really. There was nothing. There was just Labour and Conservative. And no matter which party we got, we simply got the same UK government telling us what to do and not giving us enough money to do it. Now, I calculated a couple of things. You're probably aware that um, King Charles recently got a bit of a pay rise. And you might have thought, well, the cost of you know, living and inflation, maybe a 10% pay rise would have been enough. Nope. King Charles has got a 53% pay rise. A man who's already a multi-billionaire has inherited his mother's massive fortune, who has already paid millions of pounds out of her tax money for his lavish lifestyle, has been given a pay rise of 53%. Now, that's not the only thing that has been given to the royal family. You'll know that Prince William is now uh, officially the Prince of Wales, and he's inherited the Duchy of Cornwall, which is a massive estate in Cornwall, formerly owned by his dad. And that is now passed to William. And that will produce something like £25 million a year for the Prince of Wales. Now, I did a rough back of the cigarette packet calculation of how many of these third children could be supported just from Prince William's 
uh, income from the Duchy of Cornwall, and its 2,000 children could be supported simply by the Prince of Wales not taking that 25 million extra pounds a year. He already gets millions from the so-called civil list, which pays the royal family's wages, if that's the right word for the enormous sum of money that they get. But instead of that, we know that this £25 million is probably going to be spent on more gold coaches, more clothes, more foreign trips, more travel, more lavish meals, and so on, and so on, and so on, at a time when the rest of us are expected to tighten our belts. And this is a characteristic of the British state. It's obsessed with royalty, it worships them, it pays them lavishly, while starving everybody else at the bottom end of the ladder of any kind of uh, support whatsoever. So it is entirely possible, uh, incidentally, that the Scottish government could pay a much more uh, generous child benefit than currently is available, including not just two children, but as many children as you want, because the average payment for the two-child benefit, now remember this is split between two children, is approximately uh, £104 a month. Now that's hardly any money at all, that's for two kids remember, so that's 50 quid a month each, £12.50 a week for two children. If you add a third child to that then that's obviously going to go down by a lot more, right? But if the Scottish Government was not tied to Westminster, and if we had 100% of all our tax revenues, the Scottish Government would have somewhere more than a hundred billion pounds per year to spend on any benefits it wanted. And that would mean that, on average, um, let's say there were roughly half a million children needing this extra support, it would cost the Scottish Government no more than about half a percent of its entire expenditure for the year. Half a percent is all it would take. And yet we can't afford to do that because we are starved of funds by London who take 40% of our taxation and don't give us enough to pay for their screw-ups with the child benefit cap. And the child benefit cap is all over the news at the moment. Keir Starmer has punished seven Labour MPs who rebelled and refused uh, to support it and wanted it scrapped and wanted it replaced with a benefit sufficient for at least three children. They've had the whip suspended, that means they are no longer able to really take part in anything at Westminster for, I think it's a month at least, that that's what the whip has been suspended. It basically means they're no longer effective MPs, they can't say or do anything, they can't take part in the debates and they have basically no role whatsoever other, other than perhaps in their own constituency surgeries and offices. So why did Keir Starmer need to punish them? For something which isn't in the manifesto anyway, wouldn't have hurt anybody to get rid of it, and even if these seven people had voted uh, for the amendment which the SNP sponsored and many of the other opposition parties had lent their support to, even if they had voted for it, why did they need to be punished? That was a conscience vote, right? It wasn't a whipped vote. It wasn't something where they were required to follow the party line because it was just basically a free vote. Instead of that, Keir Starmer has um, chosen to make an example of these seven people. Now, this is um, surprisingly cruel and unnecessary um, demonstration of his might, his power uh, to punish anybody who disagrees with the party line. It wasn't necessary to do it on this particular occasion, but he's done it anyway. So what is he saying here? That anyone who disagrees with Labour Party, I'm saying Labour government policy, now not even Labour Party policy, Labour government policy is going to have the whip removed and basically that's it, you know, so anybody who disagrees is out the door. What does that tell you? Well, that, that seems a remarkably paranoid and fearful way to run a party which has a gigantic majority in Parliament anyway. It wasn't necessary ever to do this, and yet he's still done it. And it's, I think it's just basically painting Labour now as even more conservative than the Conservatives, that they would be that cruel to their own people voting with their conscience about an issue which is not uh, as a part of government policy at the moment. It's a Tory policy. They could amend it. They could easily have supported the amendment. It would have cost very little to do it. 
And given the fact that they're handing out so many millions to the royal family, it would certainly have balanced things up a little bit if they had made at least an effort to try to give something at the bottom end of the pay scale as well. So, to my mind, this whole thing is ridiculous, and it's typical. It's a step back in time, back to the bad old days before the SNP, before the Scot Scotland had a parliament, or sorry, should I say, before Scotland's parliament reopened, uh, after being suspended for a long period of time. Independence is now necessary, not just for political reasons, but for social reasons. Scotland could do so much better than the British government is doing at the moment. And yet we can't, because we're dragged down with the sinking UK ship. Scotland has a buoyant economy, it's got burgeoning businesses, there's growth in Scotland. There is enormous potential in all of its renewable energy sector. Its oil sector has still got a few years left. The gas sector has got probably longer left as well um, as we switch over gradually from uh, fossil fuels to renewables. So there's an enormous amount of potential here. But punishing people for having three children instead of two is stupid, especially in a country like Scotland where the working population is gradually diminishing as more people die and fewer are born. And that means more immigration is necessary to fill the available job slots that Scotland has. And when people cannot support more than two children, it's going to deter them from having more kids. And that means fewer Scottish youngsters going to, going to school, going to college, going to university, and going out and looking for jobs, more or less, um, having more jobs than there are people to fill them. Now, not all of the jobs in Scotland, obviously, are going to pay huge amounts of money. There's a big tourism and leisure sector which doesn't pay big wages, but is desperately looking for staff. And there aren't enough Scottish youngsters there to take the jobs. And those who are there are highly educated and looking for high paid jobs you know, for postgraduates, and they don't exist very often in Scotland, so they migrate as well. There's a massive brain drain going on. So this makes no sense either economically, politically, or socially to cut benefits for families with more than two children. There are a few um, other notable things going on at the moment, but the prime thing, as far as I'm concerned, is really Scotland's need for independence is now no longer just a political aspiration. It's a vital necessity for people of working class, because I, I, let me use that phrase in its true sense. People who earn low wages in low skilled or partly skilled or extremely physical hard jobs, who may have to take on extra jobs or extra hours to make up for the lack of this benefit, which would otherwise allow them some time to spend with their children and would stop them working themselves to an early grave simply because a Labour government is not socially uh, responsible enough to increase the child benefit by one single child payment. And it's a tiny, tiny amount of money. You're talking about, in, in the case of the two child benefit at the moment, we're talking about what something like £25 a week. £26 a week for each child, the bigger part, £26 a week for each child. So we're only talking about another £26 for the third child. It's not a lot of money when you consider £25 million pounds are going to the Prince of Wales. And this is another great reason why when Scotland does become independent, it needs to be a republic. We need to get rid of the royal family. They are sucking the lifeblood out of the economy and preventing young people who deserve the help from getting it in the first place. And basically that's where I am at at the moment. I'm going back to my socialist roots. Labour Party is no longer a socialist party. It is not supporting the workers anymore. It is now supporting the elite. It's supporting the millionaire class which put Starmer in power. Starmer himself is no working class hero despite claiming his father was a tool maker. Well, look at the tool that he made. That tells you everything you need to know about Sir Keir Starmer. Anyway, that's it from IndyCar today. I hope to see you again soon. Uh, this programme will probably be carried on other channels, but if you don't see it on other channels, please share this programme, like and subscribe to the channel. 
If you feel like making a payment, my PayPal donation link is going to be posted online again in the next few days. I'm trying to raise just a couple of hundred pounds to keep these programs coming through the remaining part of the summer. At the moment, I'm making them sporadically because I simply don't have the time to devote to doing it. And when I do devote time to doing it, I lose money. So it's just really to help me make time to make these shows. That's it for MediCard today. Remember to keep the faith, but bear in mind that we are not living in a normal country. We are living in some fantasy land where worshipping kings and queens and paying them millions of pounds while we starve to death seems to be the norm. And that's not something which Scotland has ever really supported. There is not the big monarchist um, worshipping that goes on in England happening here. It never has. And in fact, the Scottish kings in history used to expect when they paraded through the streets to be shouted at and heckled and yelled at and have fruit thrown at them. That was a normal part of a Scottish monarch's life. He didn't expect to be all that popular and he expected to be criticised and was prepared to go among the people and be criticised. Not so the British royal family, I'm afraid. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll see you again uh, as soon as I can put another program together. But in the meantime, keep the faith, stay subscribed, keep supporting the channel, and I'll see you later in a week. Bye-bye for now.